we left off, just to kind of reset the stage here before we add to this, is we had basically written cookie clicker, right? So we had, uh, we added in a label. We added an instance variable to keep track of how many times we press the button. And as we started working on this yesterday, we realized that having, an, having our own click listener independent class didn't work well because the click listener class didn't have access to the button viewers private instance variables. And we didn't really wanna add more public methods to the button viewer class that allows any code to change those instance variables because it's really just something for this one button viewer class. Um, and so our solution to that is something we had never seen before, but it's kind of cool. And we learned that classes not only can have instance variables and constructors and methods, but we can put classes inside of classes. That's kind of cool. And so we actually put the click listener class inside of the button viewer class. And by doing that, because private means anything within the class can access it, because the click listener class is now inside the button viewer class, we can access those instance variables. We can say click count plus plus, we can say label that set count, our set text, um, and we preserve our encapsulation. No other code can access these things. This works out really well. The only oddity about this is we can't say just as a reminder this dot click count plus plus because this refers to this object um and this object the click listener doesn't have an instance variable click count so we actually need to kind of leave it unspecified and rely upon the java compiler to say okay click count well is there a local variable in here called click count nope is there an instance variable in here called click count Nope. <laughs> is there an instance variable in the enclosing class called click count? Oh, good, there is. We'll let this compile and that's the one we'll reference. Right? So we actually rely upon the Java compiler to find the variable for us. If we try to be over specific, um, it's, it's not gonna work. So. so that's where we left off. The one more thing I wanna add to this example um, is let's have, what happens when we have multiple buttons? How do we listen to events on multiple buttons? Because there's a couple different approaches we could take here. Um, and I wanna show you one that in general works out better um, so that you have that to refer back to as, as you go through the different practice programming activities. So let's go back up to the top of this class and let's add more to this. Let's be more than just cookie clicker. Um, let's add two buttons. Um, so let's actually rename this instance variable button, button A, and let's add a new instance variable, button B. So what we're gonna eventually here put two buttons into our user interface. Similarly, let's keep track of the count of each button independently. So let's rename this instance variable click count A and create a new instance variable click count B. And now we're gonna have to go through the button viewer constructor and basically account for these changes we made. So this should now be called click count A. We also wanna set click count B to zero. So we got both of those set. Here we're creating the first button, but let's change the variable name to button A and add button A to the panel. And then let's copy and paste this and modify it to be button B. But we'll give button B a different label. We'll set up a competition here. So we'll say button B, we'll say no, click me. They can compete with each other. Competitive cookie clicker. All right, so now we've got two buttons and one label here in our GUI. Um, and here's the thing. This is, this is the point that I kind of want to share here. How could we want to be notified? We want to listen for when button A is clicked and we want to listen for when button B is clicked. Um, we could do this in a couple of ways. 
Okay, so this is like a good example of good class design. We could create a class called click listener A and a different class called click listener B. So we'd have different classes for each of the buttons. That is probably not the best approach, right? Because we would actually have to duplicate like all of this code and it would be nearly exactly the same. Um, so we don't really want to create a whole new class for each event we want to listen for. That's really what objects are for. We want to have one class that can listen for an event and we could create we could create multiple objects that we initialize in such a way that um, it's tied to button A or button B. Um, and that's a better approach. So instead of creating multiple classes, we could create multiple objects. Um, what we usually do though, is if the events are like the same type of event and maybe just on different buttons, we actually don't create multiple classes and we don't create multiple objects. We use the same object to listen to multiple events. So it is completely okay and usually a really good option to have a single listener object listen for multiple events because when the action performed method is called, we can tell which event it is and which button it came from, okay? So I share this just so that is when you start writing your own listeners, you don't kind of get carried away and end up creating multiple classes or creating multiple objects because we don't really need any of that. We can use just one object to listen to multiple events. So let me show you what that looks like. So right here, we're creating our one object. We're not gonna change that. We do need to register it with both buttons. So let's just change this to this.button A, add action listener, and this.button B, add action listener. And then we need to make the implementation of the action performed method here a little bit more sophisticated in terms of telling, well, this, we, we've never even used this parameter event, but let's use this parameter event to be like, okay, well, which button is this event coming from? And it's really relatively easy to do so. Here's how we do it. We just do an if else. There is a method on the action event class, which is actually inherited from the event class called get source. The get source method returns a reference to the component that generated the event. Here we actually wanna check, is the reference equal to the value that is the reference stored in one of our instance variables? So if event.getSource equals button A, like equal equals button A, meaning the references are exactly the same, we know that the source of the event was button A and not button B. And so we should increment the count for button A. else if the source is button B, we should increment the count for button B. So we don't need multiple classes. We don't even need multiple objects. We just need a little bit of if, if else if logic within our action performed method to basically figure out, okay, we got this event. Where did it come from? If it came from button A, we're going to do one thing. If it came from button B, we're going to do something else. And then let's update our, our label now to reflect the count of both buttons. So we're going to make this a little bit more sophisticated. We will say, let's say we'll print A and then we'll concatenate click count A and then we'll print B and we'll concatenate click count B. So we can see the count of both. So let's run this and try it out and see how it goes. So I'm gonna run our main method 
Here's what our new window looks like. Two buttons now. If I press click me, I can see A getting bigger. If I press no click me, I can see B getting bigger. This is great, even better than cookie clicker. Very, very cool. A lot of new concepts in this example that we coded together. Um, this is gonna serve as a good reference when you do the practice programming activity um, related to the triangle GUI, which I'll, I'll kind of introduce here in just a moment. Um, it won't be just like this. There's no buttons in the triangle GUI one. You're gonna be dealing with mouse events instead. Um, but every GUI program we write is gonna follow the same structure. We're gonna define and set up all the UI components. We're gonna create our listener objects or object. We're gonna register them with whoever's events we're interested in being listening for. Um, and then we'll like kick everything off here by calling, by configuring the frame and telling the Java runtime to make it visible and start running that event loop. So. <laughs>